What's up guys, my name is Josh and real quick, I forgot something, I forgot something. <sighs> Short little detour, but we're back, we're back. And now I'm a little bit too hot because I was doing a lot of bit of running around, so hold on. One okay, stop avoiding it, damn it, stop avoiding it. You can do it, you can do it. All right, okay, you ready? You ready? I'm ready, let's go. Today we're talking about the Fostex T50 RPs and kind of what I think of them. Uh, a little bit of a disclaimer on my pair, the left channel has a little bit of a rattle when you go in the really deep notes. It didn't really seem to affect the sound, it more just was a mechanical error. And a shotgun round for the unboxing, it comes in a pretty standard cardboard box that was wrapped in bubble wrap. Pretty unimpressive, so I thought that there wasn't really a need to make a whole video about it. All right guys, I'm gonna cover this headphone in two categories, and one of them is gonna be the original with the original pads, the original foam, the original cables, and I'll kind to talk about everything I experienced with that. And then the second part is actually gonna be the mods and what it's like using mods because this are a modder's dream. I mean, these are one of the most modded pairs of headphones that I've ever tried. So as we all know, these T50RPs measure incredibly flat all across the board, especially stock. And because of that, if I had to describe how these things sound in one word, I would say relaxed. Um, personally, that isn't really the sound signature that I look for. Um, I look for something with like a little bit more emphasis, a little bit more flavor, a little bit more bite. And these don't really have that. These are the sit down, lay back. Visual representation looks like this. <laughs> and yeah, like they just don't really, they don't really have any kick to them. Nothing, nothing scary. And I realize that that's perfectly acceptable and actually desired for studio use. You don't want any particular like kick or edge in any sort of category because it's gonna make your song sound different than you want it to sound. You want the most reference pair of headphones. But I don't own a studio. I don't master music. I am Josh. I just listen to music. I enjoy music. And for listening and enjoying, they're, they're all right. For 150 bucks, they're all right. I think there's better options out there for enjoyment purposes. Okay, and then a couple other notes before I get into the modded section of this video, I noticed with the imaging and the sound stage that it was able to do left and right very well, and even within the area it was able to do it, but it wasn't able to project forward very well. I'm not quite sure why um, none of the mods that I did with it were able to actually make it create that forward projection. I'm not sure what gives headphones that ability and other headphones not that ability. It was just able to do left and right very, very well. Toto by Ros or Rosanna Toto whatever, the, it's, it's able to do the stereo imaging like fit, like just phenomenally, like really, really good, but it, it can't seem to project forward. And so I was having a little bit of an issue, like especially in video games, there's left and right, but the forward projection seems to be lacking, uh, significantly so actually, and I'm not quite sure why. Kind of going on with the general theme of this headphone stock, which is just laid back. Um, the vocals were kind of laid back into the instruments. They all kind of melded together. There wasn't a whole lot of detail in the vocal range I did notice. Um, so that's not really a desirable trait by me. But like I said, if you're mastering music, if you're producing music, these would be a perfect. So good. Although I do recommend having a bass heavy pair, a pair like this that are just flat, and then maybe something that's like a little bit more emphasis in the highs. Just so you cover like a broader spectrum of what you're listening to, you know? The bass does kind of fall off a little bit, the really low end, like uh, certain songs were just not able to kick as hard as it does in the upper range of sub bass and the mid bass area. Um, it falls off and you can see that in all the frequency response graphs, but it's pretty noticeable. There's not a lot of really low end kick. Um, but speaking of kick, there's a lot of positive actual, like tangible feedback that you get from these headphones. They really have a lot of impact behind the notes that they produce. I really like that. I like having a little bit of feedback in my headphones. Um, it kind of reminds me of the tangibility of like the Nighthawks um, and even kind of the M1060s in some of the lower notes um, or the mid-range for the M1060s, but this is able to do it all across the board. I thought that was really cool, something worth noting. And right before I get into the modded section, I want to talk a little bit about the build of these headphones. I mean, these headphones are, they're I right. they're like a six out of 10 for quality. I mean, it's plastic and metal and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's kind of like a lover to hate it design. I'm more on the hate it than the love it side, unfortunately. I will say that these look like they're over ear kind of, but they're definitely on ear. But along with that, they are actually the most comfortable on ear that I've ever tried. Uh, but that being said, over ears are just generally more comfortable. And then the last thing I want to talk about for build is actually the crappy cables that it comes with. And uh, one is orange, one is black. The black one is longer. I think it's uh, nine feet, and this one is about three feet. And it's a, a twist, or it's a push-in, twist, and lock mechanism for both sides, so it's universal for the headphone. 
I don't like the cable itself. It's rubbery and it kinks and I've been trying to get it unkinked and it won't, uh, it just refuses to. And the short one is too short and the long one is too long and again, kinks just the same. So I recommend getting an aftermarket cable. Any 3.5 millimeter will fit, although you'll probably want, um, I see a lot of the V-Moda cables and I'll link to that in Amazon down below. I see a lot of people using the V-Moda cables um, because it's a 45 degree angle instead of a 90 degree angle. And the cable itself is like a braided cable, much higher quality, not too expensive either. It's a good option. Okay, now here's the hard part of these headphones, uh, the mods. So I'm gonna, I hate this because I cannot give you a, a genuine review of how these sound modded because they sound different with every single mod that you do. There is foam underneath the pads of the stock pads. If you take that foam out, they sound completely different. If you put brainwaves angled pads like I did, they sound completely different. If you put Cosmos microfiber pads on these, which I did, they sound completely different. They sound different for everything. Now I will say, no matter what I did to it, pretty much every mod improved the sound. So I will just talk about one of the most popular self-installed mods for these headphones, which are just simply adding brainwaves pads to it. Um, I'm gonna talk about the angled ones and kind of what it sounds like. Now just know that these headphones seem to benefit from anything. So pretty much anything, any type of pad, you're going to get better results, but they're all gonna be different from one another. So it's a little bit hard to talk to in mass. So I'm just gonna focus on one of the most popular. Um, it emphasizes everything. Now with the new pads, I have no idea how it actually measures anymore. I don't have measuring equipment and I don't really care about measurements to be honest. I care about how something sounds and it, it emphasizes everything. The bass comes up, the sub bass comes up, the, the vocal isolation, it pulls away from the music and it becomes much more tangible. There's a lot more detail in there. They sound like they can come from further away, but they can also be closer. The sound stage gets, I would say before it was in the like, you would hear it from about a foot away to about 10 feet away. Now it's like a foot away to about 15 feet away. So it's increased the sound stage. The imaging, it still isn't able to come forward though. Like I will state that it still can't come forward, but the imaging is just such a broad range and it's so good. And like the Pink Floyd uh, Dark Side of the Moon album is just, ah, ooh, it's so good. Now, not only did the pads improve the sound in literally every category that I tried it, but it also made it more comfortable and I think look a little bit better because with these big bulky ear cups and these like thin pads, I think it looks a little bit like a, like a radio operator headphone. Some people dig the look, I'm not one of them, but with the big pads, it made it more comfortable. I think it looks better and it definitely sounds better. Now, if I'm gonna put it like a price to performance thing, the pads are expensive. The T50RPs alone are about 150 bucks. New pads, good ones, are gonna run you anywhere between like 40 to 45, at least for the brainwaves angled ones. Depends when you get them and where you get them. On, I bought them on Amazon. So with the mods, I would say, let's just bring the cost of this headphone up plus maybe a cable around 200 bucks. Do they sound like 200 bucks with the mods? Yes. I would say they're not worth the money if you leave them stock, but if you're gonna mod them, pretty much any money you put into the mods, you're gonna be rewarded up into that amount. Um, I put some cheap Cosmos pads on them that were like 10 bucks, and I would absolutely pay 160 bucks for these headphones if they came with those pads. They were that good and that much more impressive just by a simple pad change. So I'm sorry that I don't have more uh, pads and equipment to kind of test the different sounds, but I feel like you could do anything with these and they're so versatile on which pads will fit on them. You have a ton of different options and I think it'd be impossible for me or any other reviewer to talk about all the available mods that you could do and all the nuances of each mod. So what I recommend doing, get these, try them out, see if you like them stock and then whatever you decide you wanna do, get different pads and it doesn't matter which pad. I swear any pad will work on these. I even suck the M1060 pads. It looks ridiculous, but I even suck the M1060 pads and like the, the difference was night and day. Like I wouldn't pay for these headphones if they cost half as much stock. Um, I just, I'm not that interested in the sound signature at all. But if they came with a different pair of pads and, or you bought them and sent them to Modhouse or ZMF, I think it, they would 110% be worth the money. And I, I fully, fully mean that. And I will link to ZMF and Modhouse down below and I'm, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. 
Um, there is a little bit of a conflict of interest because I had him on a podcast with a DMS and Z-Review, and we were kind of talking about the nuances of owning a business like that for full clarity, um, but I genuinely mean it. I haven't tried any of those options, but from what I hear, the difference is night and day, and from what I am able to distinguish on my own, pretty much any mods make these things sound incredible. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that elephant in the room is that you need a nuclear reactor to power these headphones. They are the least efficient headphones I've ever tried by far. Now for sound, you can believe in break-in or not. I don't really care, that is up to you. I know what I believe, I know what some of you believe, but anyways, I wanna talk about the power requirements when I first got these things. I plugged this into the Shipfola 2 and I maxed out the Shipfola 2 and it was barely loud. Then I did the burn-in and you know, left it playing for a couple days. Then I came back to it, listened to it, listened to it, listened to it. And slowly the power requirement became less and less and less as I moved on. And now it's kind of plateaued off. I can actually decently power these things on a full of two. The SMSL 8018, not so much, still not strong enough to power them. Now, mainly what I've been driving them off of is something that has more than enough power to handle it, which is the Little Dot 3. Now, it's a tube amp, so the sound's gonna slightly change. And being a tube amp, it definitely didn't have enough power to power the lower end, um, but I definitely got a lot of low end out of that shipful. I was really impressed with the shipful. I didn't think they'd be able to power them. Um, and they don't power them quite to the level of texture and detail that the Little Dot can in the upper ranges. Um, but regarding like the mid bass and the sub bass kick that these things have and just overall, uh, not detail, but the dynamics of what they're able to produce throughout the entire song was really, really impressive. So that's more on the, the ship full of two side. Um, but if you are gonna get these, know that you need a fucking powerhouse to power these motherfuckers. Okay, now that that little rant is over, I wanna talk a little bit about a story that I have about a not date, but I'm gonna call it a date because it makes the date a little bit more funny. It's kind of fucked up, but I'm trying to keep it positive, yo. I'm trying to keep it positive. Now, normally I don't recommend making fun of people, okay? But I went to a Starbucks that was near my house and there was this girl, Kearney, who worked at the Starbucks. And I think that's her name, Kearney, Kearney, I can't remember her damn name. And I had been in there, we had kind of like flirted back and forth and eventually I decided to ask her out on a date and I gave her my number. So she ended up calling me. We met at the top of a parking garage, which sounds weird if you're not from where I am, but like, for whatever reason, that parking garage is like the staple of where like young kids hang out in the town I was living in. And it looked over this like this beautiful river and these cliffs and this small town called Old Folsom. Look it up so you, you know what I'm talking about. So it's kind of romantic, like you get the lights up there, you know, it's, it's kind of sweet, right? She's not old enough to drink, I'm not old enough to drink. It's kind of a drinking town, like there's just bars kind of at night and it's walking around and talking and stuff like that. And, you know, I kind of had a feeling that it wasn't really going to go that well. Uh, uh, we got along all right, but she, and I'm not trying to judge here, but she was just kind of, kind of dumb, right? So we keep talking and she's got like this ridiculously bubbly personality. She's like all hippie and hoppy and stuff like that. So, you know, we're talking and eventually we go back up to the parking garage after we had been walking around the town for a little while. And like out of the blue, bipolar disorder, just, she just gets quiet. She just, nothing. I was I was young, so of course I was like, I was like, what's wrong? She's like, what do you mean? I was like, how are you feeling? She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you just got quiet. Are you happy? Are you sad? She's like, oh, those aren't feelings. Those are emotions. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. Like, it's not the worst date I've ever been on or date I've ever been on. It's not the worst thing ever. Just like the the raw like the raw stupidity of this girl yeah like oh man it, it's still till to this day it was one of the funniest things so we call it feelings and emotions over in my like friend group the feelings and emotions girl or like whenever somebody's like i'm feeling hungry i'm like that's an emotion or something like that so we're we're talking about music and what type of music we like and she asked me first you know just general first date questions she's like what type of music do you like and i'm like oh me, I love everything. I'm like, I love dance music, I like rock, I like rap, I like country, I like hip hop, I like jazz, I like orchestra, like I like everything. She was like, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, what's your favorite artist? Kind of the general questions that you get following that. And I'm like, oh, what kind of music do you like? And she got quiet and she's like, oh, I don't really want to tell you. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> why not? And she's like, you'll judge me. And I'm like, why would I judge you? And she's like, well, Okay, it's dance music, but everyone assumes that 
you know, if I like dance music, I must go to raves. And if I go to raves, then I must do drugs and like LSD and stuff while I'm at the rave. And I'm like, I'm like, what? That's ridiculous. Like, do you do any of that stuff? And she's like, well, yeah, but that's not the point. What the fuck? <laughs> Like, what the fuck? You're worried about exactly what you do. I'm just trying to play it cool. Like, I'm trying to get through the day. I got along with her all right. So like, it wasn't like just painful. If it was really bad, I would have left and I've done that before. But like, I, I was just kind of like, okay, man. Like, whatever. Let's just try and get through the night. Just try and enjoy myself, right? So anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. Um, if you like it, leave a thumbs up. If you dislike it, dislike the shit out of it like you mean it because it really hurt my feelings. Um, until then, I will see you guys, or until the next video, I will see you guys. Then, <laughs> whatever. Live streams uh, pretty much every morning. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more updates on those as those go on. If you like the background, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm thinking about doing maybe like a photo session, maybe selling them for like a dollar a piece of like different audio equipment and things so you can use them for backdrops or have them printed if you so choose. Let me know what you think about that idea down below as well. Um, Google playlist down below. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll wrap this video up finally after this long ass intro or outro. What the fuck, dude? Today's not my day. All right, stay safe, don't drown, don't do anything your mom wouldn't approve. It's always good advice. My name is Josh, peace.